Hi, this is Jay Billis of ESPN, and you're listening to the ML Sports Platter. The ML Sports Platter back with you all over the major platforms. Go ahead and download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review. We're brought to you by Ken's Auto Detailing, the Syracuse Fitness Store, Prestwick Golf, and our great, great friends over at Camillus Golf Club. 18 holes of spectacular golf await at Camillus. Golfers travel throughout the state of New York, so get on over to Camillus Golf Club and visit them online at camillushillsgolfclub.com. The official golf course of the ML Sports Platter is Camillus Golf Club. And hey, by the way, a big tip of the cap, thank you to the official college of the ML Sports Platter, Bryant and Stratton College. It's just a great time to be a Bobcat. Academics, excellence, uh, and, 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 and everything that goes with it. The athletic teams are rolling. They've got new majors left and right. They've got fairs coming up. So make sure that you go ahead and check, uh, you know, their graphic design expo is coming up. Check them out on Facebook. Check them out on Instagram. Check them out everywhere. And uh, visit bryantstratton.edu today as Bryant and Stratton College gets ready for another semester. We're getting ready for the NFL football season here on the platter uh, as well. And let's bring in the National Football League feature writer for Go Long. It is a cr- just an incredible platform. Tyler Dunn here on the program. Follow him on Twitter at T-Y Dunn. That's at T-Y-D-U-N-N-E. And visit GoLongTD.com and subscribe to that great platform as well. Previously, of course, with the Bleacher Report Group, Buffalo News, Journal Sentinel, a Syracuse grad, and, by the way, a newly minted father yet again. TD, thanks for coming on. Great to be here, Mike. Thanks so much for having me, brother. So, uh, how, sleep deprived a little bit? Is that is that the understatement here? With the de- de- <laughs> first of all, congratulations, but it is a lot of work on the other side. Two kids now, man. Two kids. Oh my God! Well, thank thanks so much. It's uh, I mean, it, there's nothing like it. I mean, it, it's the best experience ever to, have, to bring somebody to the world. I mean, to, to, to experience like you know, it's there's nothing compares to it that that adrenaline rush. But yes, a little sleep deprived. <laughs> Survive in advance mode right now with the uh, the three week old and the twenty two month old. So we got we got two different uh, two different levels going on right now. Yeah, no doubt. I remember you had your first two months before I had my first, and my mine is turning twenty months uh, in in about what ten or twelve days here. So uh, wow, pretty awesome. pretty wild stuff. Yeah, New Year's Eve twenty nineteen uh, around three o'clock p.m. Thank you to Quinny Lane Lindsley for getting in the tax money. Huh? I mean, let's. Uh, <laughs> So um, I, I got this new thing, this new theory I, I'm subscribing to. These franchise quarterbacks in the National Football League, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Lamar, Tyler, these guys don't need to play preseason games at all ever again because, look, we saw it last year, no OTAs, no preseason. Everybody was fine. These guys are pros beyond pros. They have instant chemistry with their wide receivers. And, and they don't need to play in these games. And, oh, by the way, most of these uh, QBs play on great teams, so they're playing against really good defenses. Why play a preseason game ever again if you're a franchise quarterback? Totally agree. I mean, preseason football, it's, it's no secret. It, it's about money. I mean, it's a chance for, for revenue, and I'm sure everybody agreed they needed some of that revenue after losing the games last year. So p- part of me gets it, but when it comes down to the actual football aspect of it, you don't need these games if you're a star quarterback if you're a star team quarterback because you're going to get that chemistry that you need months in advance i mean down at pete bomarito center in, in florida that's where the, the groundwork was really laid for josh allen stefan diggs that whole buffalo bills offense i mean they had a, a good chunk of their team down there all getting on the same page all running routes all run players so I, I don't think you necessarily need to be out there on the field to time things up it, Maybe it helps for the functionality of things. So, you know, you're getting in and out of the huddle. You, you've got fans in the stands. You've, it's, it's a legit game, and it just subconsciously, maybe it just kind of helps you get ready for the real thing. But I think if you're a pro, you don't really need it. They're not going to go away, though, because there's money to be had. So we all just kind of have to uh, wait for the real deal right now and, and try not to get too worked up over these games that don't count. Yeah, speaking of not getting worked up, uh, it, it's, I will say, though, it is a little hard not to get worked up about what we're hearing from San Francisco and Chicago with these two youngsters and Trey Lance and Justin Fields. Uh, what do you have here on these guys? What do you like the most? And uh, they got to start, right? They have to. Yeah, I think that the crane just rises to the top. And, and if they're 
talented enough to start, they're going to start. And it, it shouldn't take, you know, Tyrod Taylor getting stabbed in the lung by the team doctor for Justin Herbert to play. It, it shouldn't take something like that for Justin Fields to see the field in Chicago, Trey Lance to see the field in San Francisco. I, and look, I, I don't even think that Andy Dalton and Jimmy Garoppolo are that bad. It, it sounds like both are having solid camps. They kind of are what you've always known what they are. And if you're not playing the, the rookies, it's just because you're a little scared. Like you just don't want to risk their stunting their development. I don't know. You know, if you're going to coach scared, live scared, run a team scared, you're never going to make the Super Bowl. Like, what's what's the goal here? Is the goal to get to eight, nine wins? Then great, play Dalton, play Garoppolo, play quarterbacks like that as long as you want, if that's the goal. And guess what? You'll probably sell tickets. you probably fill your stadium. Everybody's happy. But if the goal is to win a damn Super Bowl, then you are going to take a risk on the special traits that are in a Trey Lance, the – the speed, the elusiveness, the, the big arm that we saw in that throw in the preseason. You're going to take a risk on Justin Fields, who was so dynamite at Ohio State. Like you, th- Those are the kind of players that, yeah, you might swing and miss, but you had to take that swing, especially with Lance, because you're not interested in that eight-win, nine-win season. So you rip the Band-Aid off at some point, and I, I think Kyle Shanahan already is ripping that Band-Aid off. That's what's in Chicago. But Kyle Shanahan's... Um, his tune has changed. It went from there's no quarterback competition to the other day saying, well, you know, we're kind of taking a look at both the guys. We'll see how it shakes out. So he's already kind of, you know, um, greasing, greasing the wheels here for Trey Lance to be the starting quarterback, I think. I think they know. I think they know there in San Francisco he's the guy. Give me your top three teams in 2021 you're looking forward to watching and, and the reason why. Ooh, I like that. Hmm. I will say, I think San Francisco is one of those teams for me. Just just because they are really, really talented for a team that won just a few games last year. Like, they had a ton of injuries, an apocalyptic string of injuries. You get all those players back. You add just a fun, dynamic talent in Trey Lance, who is going to be unleashed as a runner in Kyle Shanahan's offense. I'd imagine that they're really studying different ways to use it. So that, they're absolutely one of those teams for me. Elsewhere, gosh, I don't want to give you a half-baked answer here. Um, well, give me a full-baked one, then. <laughs> <laughs> By <a> time. <laughs> I think the Chargers. Yeah, the me Chargers, too. I, I, you know, Justin Herbert was, was so good as a rookie. Mm-hmm. I mean, historically good as a rookie. And that was with, you know, not, not, not the greatest team around him, especially on defense. You know, they didn't really have much support. On that side of the ball, I think Derwin James kind of changes things there. I think Joey Bosa up front is an elite talent. So, I mean, just Justin Herbert, his arrow is only going to point up. He was able to put up those ridiculous numbers with without an OTA, without many camp, without the preseason. So, I think that you know the Chargers are a team I just cannot wait to see and, and could realistically challenge the Chiefs. Why not? I mean, mm-hmm. I think that they could challenge the Chiefs in that division. And then one more, you know, uh, man. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say the Jaguars. I don't know if they're gonna be good or not, but I really want to see how this works with with Urban Meyer and, and Trevor Lawrence. They do have some young pieces. I think there's a reason he took that job. You know, as bad as they were, that there there's some talent offensively. There's a nucleus to work with. I, I, how does that college offense that dominated? How does that work in the NFL? We've seen college coaches. You know, whether it's the X's and O's or whether it's the way that they run a team, we, we've seen it not work in the NFL, but then we've seen it work. Does Urban Meyer change that? Like, is, is he able to adapt? Is he able to bring what he's done everywhere, Bowling Green, Florida, um, Ohio State? Is he able to bring that to the NFL? Utah, throw that in there, too. I I, I think that's going to be interesting. You know, watching that preseason game, a lot of the routes that they were doing were like, long developing plays that you never see in the preseason. Like they risk Trevor Lawrence getting hit. So I think they're those try different things that we're not used to seeing. Tyler Dunn, our guest, go long, go subscribe at golongtd.com and get him on Twitter at T Y Dunn. That's D U N N E. A um, couple more for you here, Tyler. I'll let you run under your swamped. Um, good. Is this upcoming season, you know, you hear it every year, right? Oh, it's going to be the most unprecedented NFL season. It's, you know, the bigger than the last year. And, and you know what? It, to a certain degree, it, it is true because it, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more money. But this year is a lot different because last year we had, you know, the no-fan situation. 
I mean, ratings, fans back in the stands, I, I, it's going to be absurd, right, on a week-to-week? -week? I think that the country is just dying to yeah. get to these games. Me too. It, you know, it was an entertaining season last year. and got so many amazing storylines. Tom Brady went at a dang Super Bowl post Bill Belichick with Tampa. Like, so, so many just really great players and great teams and great moments to watch. And you couldn't even really be there. You couldn't see it in person. I, I think that there's a reason you're going to see these teams, even with this variant. And we'll see what happens with that all. There is a reason you'll see these teams do everything in their power to make sure fans are in the stadium and – just anecdotally living here in Buffalo, uh, I'm sure you hear and see the same thing out there in Goose. Like people are dying to get to these games. Yeah. Like, they, they just want, they just want to be a part of it. They want to smell the action. They want to see it. They want to feel it. They want to tailgate. They want to drink beers in the stadium. I think that that raw desire to just experience what was lost last year, like anything in life, you know, you, you learn to appreciate something more when you don't have it, not having to be, you know, football games in the flesh and seeing it with your own eyes and having to consume it all on TV. I think fans definitely miss getting to these games. So it's going to add a you're, – you're right. It's hard to quantify, right, Mike? It's hard to figure out why this season just feels different, the anticipation for this season feels different. But that that's probably it. Anecdotally, all these things kind of add up. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You know, people in central New York are so excited to get back. They're even they're even willing to go see Syracuse football. <laughs> they're, 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 that, they're that willing and that exciting. Uh, excited. I, I can't wait too. I mean, we take a father uh, son trip out there. We started the tradition pre COVID. So I, you tell me, can can we go to the games? I haven't really looked it up. I believe I believe you can. And and when you do that trip this year, please let me know because I got to go up to the hill and meet you. Grab a slice somewhere, okay? Yes, yes, um, yes, absolutely. And I still got to get to Western New York too. But you know how it is. You wake up one day and another month peels off the calendar. Summer's almost <laughs> over. Football's here. The New York State Fair is here. People go back to school in two weeks. I mean, it's just, it's insane. Oh my God. Let's wrap with this. Why don't you get uh, some of the content out there and, and what people could get if they subscribe to go along. Some of the stuff you guys, been, you guys have been working on. And by the way, the podcast shows have been unbelievable. The happy hour video is terrific. So hats off to you and, and the crew and Jim and everybody. Oh, man. Thanks so much, Mike. Yeah, go along, TD.com. Uh, you can subscribe there, a couple options. You can just get uh, the, the free stories that we produce by putting in your email. If you want everything, you can subscribe at seven a month or seven day a year. And, and also, it's a good time because um, in, what, 10 days, a couple weeks here, we're going to be relaunching uh, the whole platform. Oh, wow. So I'll have a lot of announcements at that time. On, you know, I can't really say it right now. I wish I could, but... We're bringing on some people, we're introducing some new shows, and I'll be dropping um, about five or six pretty big features that first week in September that I think folks are going to want to read from across the NFL. You know, I think it's, it's a national site, um, yet still I want to tell a story that you can't get anywhere else, like lean into those relationships from around the league, and I, I think we've got some, uh, some stuff worth supporting and worth reading, so... Can't, can't thank everybody enough. Love it. Best in the biz, national feature writer for Go Long. Go subscribe. Go Long TD.com at TY Dunn at TY D U N N E. Tyler Dunn getting it done. Thank you so much, TD. Uh, good luck with all the content in your busy life and the two kids and uh, ba babies and battles and diapers <laughs> and, uh, and craziness, man. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you. And, and your pal Edmund, he was just, he's just looking at me. He's like, what? what come on. Come on, Mike. What about me? Love you know? him. Love him. Uh, you know what? You're well right. Too. How how could I have left? How could I have left that puff out? <laughs> yeah, I apologize. Thank you. He is a forgotten child. He really is. Well, you, well, I don't know about that. I mean, you, you and I. I mean, we. I had a dog before I had a kid, but I, I don't. My dog gets probably more attention. And I'll tell you this: he's getting a lot more food because the food's getting yeah. thrown off the high chair left and right. So. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, they they kind of work in uh, tandem, right? Yeah, like, they I, do. I They're a like team. Just sneaking yeah. them food. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Tyler, thank you. Thanks, Mike. The ML Sports Platter is brought to you by our great friend Brian Conboy at Mass Mutual New York State. Liverpool Physical Therapy and Stanley Law Offices, together, they'll work to get you the maximum award. Log on today to stanleylawoffices.com for more information. Let's bring in Sal Mayorana to the ML Sports Platter, the terrific Buffalo Bills insider and beat man for the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. He's a must-follow on Twitter, especially during baseball season, by the way. At Sal Mayorana, Democrat and Chronicle on Twitter as well, at DNC. Sal, thanks so much, buddy. How you been? Welcome back. It's good to be here, Mike. 
what have you seen out of training camp that you really, really like out of the Bills and maybe some things that uh, are coming, kind of coming across as uh, work to do, so to speak? Uh, well, you know, to be honest, like I always say every year, Mike, practice is practice. <laughs> so it's it's always tough for me to make real determinations on what's happening because nobody's out there tackling and it's just a little bit of a different feel than obviously a preseason game. So, you know, in practice, things look really good on offense, especially. Yeah. Nobody's being covered. <laughs> nobody's being rushed as a passer. And the Bills have a lot of talent. So you would expect that things are going to go smoothly. You know, there was a, you know, Tom Brady back in the day with the Patriots, they always said that the ball never hit the ground in practice. That's kind of what we're seeing with Josh Allen. He's been really sharp with his passing. He just looks like, again, uh, it's kind of a continuation of last year. He seems so in tune with the offense. Now he's back with, you know, year two with Steph Diggs, for instance, and guys like that. They've just been really sharp on offense so far. How about the uh, the cornerback situation opposite Trey White? There's a battle there, right? Do you, do you, do you see it? Dan Jackson, Levi, Levi Wallace probably is in the lead now. Uh, who, who do you think wins that in the end? Yeah, I, I can't imagine that they don't start Levi Wallace yeah. there. I think he's played really well throughout camp. Um, he's been a guy that, you know, Mike, they've been trying to replace him for three years, and they haven't been able to do it. So I, I don't see Dane Jackson making, you know, the big push as a seventh-round pick last year to take that role. Now, that being said, I think Jackson can be a decent player and he gives them a little bit of depth at the cornerback spot. But really, when I look at this team, Mike, that's the biggest area of concern that I have Me too. is cornerback. They, yeah. they just do not have a lot of quality depth. And I wonder if they if if Trey White were to get injured or even yeah. Wallace, you know, what would they do? I really believe that as this, you know, the cuts start being made, I think it would behoove the Bills to take a look at the market and see if they can get a veteran cornerback in here. Not so much to push Levi Wallace, but just to give them some security. So that Josh Allen contract, we knew it was coming, and we knew it'd be a lot. Was it? Was it right around what you thought? Uh, you thought Sal that he'd get? Honestly, Mike, I really didn't know what they were thinking or how much they would give him. It sounds like it's right in the ballpark. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it looks like the Bills might have gotten a decent deal. I mean, <laughs> it looks like if you could say that about a quarter of a billion dollars, you know, down the road, that, that contract might look pretty good. Now that doesn't say, that doesn't mean to say that they won't renegotiate it. I mean, four years from now, they might very well renegotiate, extend it, whatever they do. But on the surface right now, that looks like a pretty good contract and it's right in the ballpark with, you know, the upper echelon quarterbacks. Now the key Mike is going to be, does Josh Allen continue to move forward and, you know, reward the Bills for giving him that deal. I mean, I hate to throw water on a on a scalding hot fire here, but he needs to prove it again, right? I mean, mm-hmm. he had one great year. Now, I think he's going to be a very good quarterback. I just hope that this, this contract doesn't weigh him down and he suffers it, but I hope he keeps playing the way he did and just keeps getting better every year. I just I look at last year's offense, and I know Dable's back. I know they had Emmanuel Sanders. Like I get it. You know you have another year of Stephon Diggs. Gabe Davis is growing. The tight ends we'll see. The running backs we'll see. But Allen obviously everything goes through him. The O line you hope will be in, intact as well. I mean, how much better can it really get from last year? I honestly like I don't think it can. I mean, they scored five hundred and one points last year. They they had never scored that their their previous team record was four fifty eight. <laughs> so I don't know that it could get any better than what it was. I think the key for them is gonna be to be, you know, nearly as good as they were, protect the football, and hopefully this season, Mike, play a little better on defense where you don't yeah. need to win the games thirty eight to thirty five. Their defense I thought was was rather mundane last year. And for, you know, the type of talent they have and it's the same system ever since McDermott got there. It was a little underwhelming. If they can play better on defense and help the offense, the offense won't have to score 500 points this year. Yeah, no doubt. Sal Mayoran, a Rochester Democrat and Chronicle, our guest here on the ML Sports Platter. I, I, I've thought for a while now here, you know, especially with last year and the corona situation, I, I just don't think there's any need for these franchise quarterbacks from Mahomes to Allen to Lamar to Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, every, Aaron, you know, everybody in between, uh, Justin Herbert, whoever it might be. I just don't think that these guys need to even play a, a, a preseason game. I, I don't see what the point is. Why get in there for one quarter of reps? Your defense, in some cases, that you're facing is better 
uh, than the defenses that you would play in the preseason game. Why risk you know the injury situation? And we learned last year with the Bills specifically, look, no OTAs, no training camp. Well, they came out of the gate 30 points, 30 points, 30 points. They went to the AFC title game. Allen was an MVP candidate. Why play these games in the preseason for a quarterback, right? Well, I see your point, but I also think, Mike, that you know they haven't played a real down of football since the end of January. I don't think it would hurt to get Allen out there for maybe a quarter in the Green Bay game. Um, get him, you know, get a little bit of a feel for the game day operation. Just get him back on the field in a real setting before you jump into the fire against Pittsburgh on September 12th. But I also see the other side that you're making is why it risks the injury. It, it, it is for a preseason game and, and what, what value you might get out of putting him on the field. I can perfectly understand if none of these guys play. But I think in Allen's case, I don't know that he's, you know, he's reached – uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers status for Brady status. I, I wouldn't mind seeing him play maybe a quarter, just get some of the kinks out. Don't forget, they've got two weeks after the preseason game to the regular season. Yeah, Usually it's nine or ten days. They, it's a long way to go. I, I would get him out there briefly. Okay, uh, that's fair. Um, g- give me a, a little uh, a little taste of, of what you think as far as, you know, the the other battles here and Maybe guys who will be who will make the team. A couple guys who people aren't expecting who will get left off. Uh, Jake Kumaro's made some strides. Um, you know where are we at with Hollister? Some of the other defenders. Just just that whole thing bundled together. So yeah, I mean, first of all, with uh, with Kumaro, I, I love the kid. I think he he's just a gamer. You can see why Aaron Rodgers was so pissed that the uh, the Packers cut him last year. So I, I really think he's got the upper hand on that last position. Um, at wide receiver. I, I, I assume they're going to keep six. They did last year. One of those guys was Andre Roberts, who really was just a return guy. So if they keep six this season, you know, McKenzie is probably going to be the returner, but he's going to play a lot on offense. So I don't know that Kumaro or whoever gets that sixth spot will play a lot, but I think it's a nice guy to have around. I, I would definitely keep him. You know, Isaiah Hodgins, their, their six-round pick last year, got hurt again. And I, you know, he might be a candidate to go on IR again and just keep stashing him for the future. So I think Kumaro makes it at tight end. You know, Hollister, I think, is locked in as the backup. I mean, it's going to be Knox and Hollister. The third guy, I was kind of hoping it was going to be Tommy Sweeney, but he got hurt again right. in the game against Detroit. So I don't know. They haven't given us any indication. He was in a walking boot. So I don't know what his status is. Um, other battles I see, really, defensive line is going to be, I think, a really tough place to cut. They've got they've got some really good players there, and I'll tell you what, whoever the Bills cut is going to end up somewhere else in the league. Um, you know, you might see Harrison Phillips could be a surprise uh, cut there. I mean, they, I think they really like, um, you know, they signed F.A. Obata. He can play inside. Basham was drafted as an end. He can play inside. Um, Justin Zimmer, who came on last year out of nowhere, they love him. So, I mean, Harrison Phillips is a possible cut of a guy who's been around a while. And then on the edge, it's the same situation. They've got some good players that are, that are not going to make the team. So, yeah, it's a tough uh, – it's a very good problem to have, but it'll be tough meetings for the coaches. Boy, Greg Russo looks good too, huh? Yeah, I was surprised. I, I really thought, like a lot of people, that Basham was going to be the one who would come in and play more early on because he played four years at Wake Forest. You know, Russo took the year off last season – He's really come in and looked good. I think he's definitely going to have a role. Uh, he'll be active on game days. Basham might end up being the guy that maybe is inactive once in a while on game day. So that's going to be – that's nice, too, because I, you know, I wasn't completely sold on the Russo pick. He just, you know, I don't like the guys that haven't played a lot of college football. And even with the, the opt-out, he hadn't played all that much at Miami before that. So I'm always wary. But, hey, so far so good. He's a talented – long, lanky kid, and he looks like he could be a good pass rusher in the league. Final one for you. How serious is the Diggs uh, bang up here with the knee? Is it, is it, he'll be all right? Well, I mean, McDermott said that he doesn't think it's going to carry into the season. We really have get, been given almost no indication exactly what the problem is. Um, Diggs hasn't talked um, for more than a week now, I think. So I think he's going to be okay. Um, I think what it is more than anything else, Mike, is that he doesn't need to be practicing out here. You know, he, he, they know what they know what they've got in him. They're trying to figure out the bottom of the roster, and if he's tweaked a little bit, then give him the time off, and he'll be ready to fire. I think when uh, when the season starts. 
Hey, a uh, l- little bit of a better time here with the Yankees. So you have, haven't been able to tweet <laughs> bad stuff. I, you know, and I, I made a point to Scott Petoniak uh, a few days ago. I said, you know what? I wanted them to bottom out so bad and just lose 90 games, finish in last place, wake Hal up. But you know what? I'm not sure anything is going to make Hal you know, make changes. I think it's Boone, Cashman, and Hal for as long as we go here. So I might as well just root for the team. And I got to tell you, they they are more fun right now. They're a, they're a better watch, and the, the Rizzo-Gallo tandem has been great. Tyone stunned me. And so, uh, you know, it, it, they're playing better. I don't trust them in the playoffs, but they're playing better to get in. Yeah, you're right. I was in the same boat as you. I, I was almost rooting. When they were 43 and 41, whatever it was, I was almost rooting for them to tank it out and, you know, redo things, you know, get rid of Boone. Uh, but they have. They've turned it around. I, I'm the same as you, Mike. I still don't know when they get to the postseason, is this team going to be good enough, especially with that bullpen? That bullpen is just a mess. They can't count on anybody at the end of games, and we all know how important in the postseason closing it out is going to be. So I don't know what to make of them. But you're right. I mean, they have got me back watching again. I still tweet negative things because that's just what I do. <laughs> and they usually give me good reason, Mike. I mean, yeah, last right. night, Chad Green oh, throws God. a meatball, right? Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're definitely more fun to watch. Um, I wish Gallo would start doing something. I disagree with you on that. I think he's been a, a waste so far. Hmm. He's, in a couple home, he's in a couple home runs, but he's done, he's done exactly what he's done his whole career, is just strike out a million times. So I'd like to see him come around. I mean, it's nice to have a left-handed bat, but... You that know, well, I like him in the. Out every time. I like him in the field though too. He's made. I mean, True. that throw against Boston. I mean, there's more to it for everybody. Strikes out a ton. You're right. Gallo does it a lot. But he, man, having having all of that mixed in, right? The occasional pop out of the park, fielding a position, God forbid, and just a lefty bat is a different look. I, I'm, you know, it, it's better than whatever the hell else they had. Let's put it well, like you're that. You're right. You're absolutely right. He is definitely an upgrade. He makes the he makes the lineup look a little bit different but Mike the the biggest thing with this lineup right now is the fact that they finally got Stanton to play the outfield that's I was just going to bring it up yep right I mean that has opened up so it's amazing what that one move yes can do because they open up the DA spot you can do so many different things now even late in the games when they when they go to their defensive package you know they've just got so many more options and I'll never understand Mike why this guy couldn't stand in the outfield for nine innings, occasionally run after a ball. I, I, it just baffled me yep. why this guy couldn't play the outfield. So I hope it continues. I hope he stays healthy. And I think if he does, you do. You kind of have to like the way the lineup looks right now. Yeah, John Carlos Stanton blocks the roster to a degree, but you know what? If you don't baby him and don't you know don't allow him to be you know to block everybody, play him in the field. Look at what happens. Luke Voigt can DH. You can move Lemayhew around. Rizzo's a fantastic first baseman. And he can play there uh, as well. Sal Marana, the Buffalo Bills insider and uh, reporter, Democrat and Chronicle on Twitter, a must follow at salmarana.com. Sal, you're the best. Thank you, bud. All right, Mike. Good. Hat. Thanks for having me. The ML Sports Platter is brought to you by Stanley Law Offices, Liverpool Physical Therapy, X Exotic Pets, and our great, great friends over at Bryant Stratton College. Two and four year degrees are available. Classes start soon. Register today. Bryant Stratton College of Syracuse, the official college of the ML Sports Platter. Hit me on Twitter, at Mike L Sports. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games. 